and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, Brad Heineck here. I'm exactly one half of the Bob and Brad team. And today the subject is we're doing a podcast, as a matter of fact, the title, Now OTC or Over-the-Counter Voltaren Gel Pain Reliever versus the traditional Motrin, Advil, Aleve, or Tylenol. We're going to give you information on how to decide, is Voltrum the new over-the-counter pain med for you or not? And today we have an expert here that's going to help us out with the facts, Chris, the pharmacist. Hey, guys. And once again, not only that, but we should mention that the Bob and Brad physical therapists, we're exactly where we are. The world famous physical therapist. In our opinion, of course. All right, so I total, totally uh, enamored that whole introduction. Let's get on with the po program, Chris. All right. So, again, let's look at this. I'm, I'm looking at this from a therapist's point of view. Uh, pain management can be absolutely critical whether therapy is successful or not. Particularly, an example is like a knee surgery, and you got to get the knee moving. Oh, yeah. Got to break up scar tissue. And that th thing, times like that, it's okay to have pain. So if we can decrease the pain, we can get more motion yep. and get the therapy, therapy the going on. But going. for the general public, if you just want to control a headache or you want to control joint pain, arthritic pain, maybe a sprained ankle or whatever it may be, this Voltaren gel is now over the counter. Yep. Uh, so anybody can use it, but let's get to the basics. Sure. Um, is it really new? Is Voltaren gel something that has been used or not? Well, yeah, Voltaren gel has been around. It's diclofenic 1%. It's a topical gel. Uh, Dicle that's diclofenic's the... the generic name of it. Okay. And so when you we use it, it's been around as a prescription for quite a while. I mean, For like a decade or more? Yeah, I think 2009 is when it came out. So oh. it's been around. Yep. So it's definitely had its place in the orthopedic circle. So, I mean, it, it it's really goes right to your arena. So I when mean, you say orthopedic, some people, you know, it's for joints. Yeah, it's uh, going to be for us. I mean, it's widely used for osteoarthritis, but it can be used for joint pain, muscle aches. You know, there's just certain joints you can't use it on a real effectively, like the hip joint. Hip is just too thick. I mean, it's too deep. You can't get this to penetrate into the hip directly. Okay. So right. it's going to be more for your, you know, your ankles, your elbows, hands. Uh, you got a back pain, you got yep. sore ribs. Yep. I mean, people have used it, you know, with a little cartilage tear. I mean, so, it, you know. So if someone is... Uh in the past, doctors would prescribe the exact same thing. And exact then, same thing. There's no difference between this and the prescription. So how did it, why was it prescription and then all of a sudden now it's over the counter? Um, I think really what it comes down to is safety. And mm -hmm. so they've had years and, you know, decades worth of experience okay. uh, showing that it was a very safe and effective product. Didn't cause, any, you know, the biggest complaint for this for patients that have side effects is going to be kind of a rash or some itchy skin. So sure. that is, that's about it. So, I mean, the, you know, the, the no-nos are if you're on blood thinners uh, or if you were allergic to NSAIDs or aspirin, yep. um, those would be the things that you would not use it for. And, okay. of course, patients talking to the doctors, you know, it's very important to give them all that information so they're, you know, imbibed with that so that they can get you the right choice. But, sure. you know, when you walk into the pharmacy and you're like, gosh, I'm just looking for some pain relief. I got a sore knee. It's just bugging me. You know, uh, Voltaren gel is actually a really good thing that people can certainly try in, in the arena of pain relief. So whether it's going to be ibuprofen, whether it's going to be naproxen sodium or, or acetaminophen. So, so you're, you're and I always get this confused. So naproxen sodium is the same as Aleve. Aleve. Yep. Aleve. Aleve. Yeah. Or, we're talking ibuprofen would be Motrin or Advil. Yeah. Aleve is going to be naproxen sodium, okay. acetaminophen is Tylenol, Okay, and then Voltaren is diclofenic. Okay, yeah. So it's it's whether it's the manufacturer or the generic term. Correct. But they're the same active ingredient. Exa exact same thing, and okay. that's that's the business end. So so for di di diclofenic. Yeah. Is there other manufacturers that have it? Or, or is no, Voltaren kind of Well, I have... mean, GSK uh, owns the patent that was on diclofenac okay. gel. And actually, so and there's a 3% prescription one also for a different process, but a uh, problem. Um, so, but yeah, it's been around for years and, uh, you know, it's, it's effective, good stuff. We've been using it as a generic medication. Uh, so it's a lot more cost-effective alternative for patients. And, sure. and now this is just really affordable stuff over the counter. So it, okay. it's, it's just nice because now it gives access to many. 
So you don't necessarily need to see a doctor. So if you right. haven't, you know, weekend warrior kind of stuff, you were out in the yard and you were raking and you kind of hurt your back, or you pulled something or did something to your shoulder, you're playing catch with your kid and sure. you just did something to your rotator cuff or labrum or something silly yep. that maybe it's minor, you know, maybe doesn't need a doctor or physical therapist yet. You know, let's try and use something like this, you know, three, four times a day and see if it helps to relieve it and provide the pain relief that the patient needs. So I'm thinking in my head trying to separate all these different uh, avenues out for pain relief because, you know, in my case, I do best with uh, ibuprofen product, sure. okay? Yeah. Uh, I've tried Tylenol, it doesn't seem to work, you know, and everyone has their own, their bodies have their own pre preferences. Correct. So if you know that, I'm thinking, well, what about this? Can you give, now my understanding, if, if this goes directly, say I have a sore knee, if I take my ibuprofen, it goes throughout my whole system, and it gets to that knee. Yep. So if I take this, if I'm thinking right, and I put it directly on my skin, does it does that medication go through the skin to the point of the irritation? It depends on the depth, but I mean that's why the hip joint's not the best place to put it. Sure. But let's say we're talking a knee and ankle. You know, people use it for arthritic hands all the time, sure. and so you know it's important to get the uh, proper. So basically, below the waist, we use four grams as the measuring tool, and I don't know that. Tanner, can you will that focus in on there or not? I don't know. There's a there's a measuring guide that's actually included within the box. Well, basically, upper joint is going to be two inches, lower joint is going to be four inches, and so basically, it's just like kind of squirting out toothpaste. So you just put oh. it on the spreading blade, and let's say we're going to treat. We'll just pretend I've got a sprained wrist. Yep. So we're going to put two grams on the wrist, and then you're just going to rub it in really well. Just wash your hands gently. You don't want to wash off the spot, but maybe wash this hand with soap and water otherwise, yep. just so it doesn't irritate the skin. I mean, there's no point to it. The biggest complaint can be a little bit of skin irritation, but it's going to penetrate to through the dermis into the joint. You know, sure. not It's not going to get all the way deep into the joint, but it's going to help to where those pain receptors are and hopefully help to kind of control some of the inflammation that's creating some of the pain. Sure. So, and you'll apply this every six hours or four times a day, max, you know, three to four times a day. A lot of people, it's going to be hard to go on a 24 hour schedule because we sure. sleep somewhere in there or we're yep. busy. But you know, three, four times a day, four to six hours apart is a reasonable usage pattern for this particular product. So upper body, this is neat. So like Chris says, I would take that out. And it's this is so nice because you can just squirt it on there yep. about that size so you get an do accurate dosage. Exactly. And that's you don't important. have to get a measuring cup. No, on. you're not guessing. No. <laughs> yeah, and you'll get a kind of an idea. But yeah, you want to, and then you just basically, let's say, or your elbow, you just kind of rub it in. And so, and basically you'll do that four times a day. And hopefully we're going to help to control the pain and inflammation so you're more functional. Uh, do do you, Have you heard a lot of people allergic or break out from this? Or is no, that pretty I, I mean, the biggest common side effect is a little bit of itchy, irritated skin. Mm -hmm. If you have an allergy to, you know, NSAIDs, which would be your ibuprofen, your mm -hmm. Aleve, you know, those types of things, aspirin, you would want to avoid using the product okay. because there's a higher chance that, you know, this is diclofenic. It is an NSAID. So it's, okay. it's certainly something that is within that family, that umbrella. Right. So you could see an allergic reaction. We don't right. want to, we don't want to tip the balance in the wrong direction. Sure. So if, if you know you're allergic to an NSAID, you should avoid it. Okay. And that's so, when we go to Tylenol. Sure. And, and on the other hand, if you have problems taking some of the other oral meds it, because it upsets your stomach. Yep, and that's one of the advantages. And I was going to get to that. But yep. yeah, that's while we're on it, we'll just keep talking about it. Sure. So, you know, when you take a traditional anti-inflammatory, so ibuprofen, naproxen sodium, aspirin, those products are going to have an increased risk of causing some stomach ulceration or sure. some kidney damage. So NSAIDs do have a risk. They can raise blood pressure. They can be damaging to the heart, kidneys. So there's a lot of things that, even though they do very good things for us and for many of us, we have to use it appropriately under the doctor's guidance, or at least make sure you're talking to your pharmacy about safe safe use, length of use, those types of things, yeah. because we don't want to create a new problem in a different area of the body. Right. One of the distinct issues that drives the bus with NSAIDs is stomach ulceration or irritated gut. Mm -hmm. So when you use something topical like uh, Voltaren gel or diclofenic gel, what that's going to do is you're not going to get that whole amount of systemic absorption. So when we take the tablet, like you said, it kind of goes all over. This acts right in the area. Yep. And so you're going to get some that goes into the bloodstream so you can see some oh, okay. prostaglandin inhibition. So there is still the remote, and I do mean remote, possibility that even though this is a, a topical gel, that it could cause stomach ulceration, which is why we don't stack NSAID on NSAID. So if you're already taking a regimen of, you know, your doctor puts you on, we'll just say 600 milligrams of ibuprofen yeah. four times a day, you're not going to use this on top of that. because. I see. There is a synergistic or an additive effect sure. that with, when we're talking to the, when we're swinging things to the negative. So kidneys, stomach, 
heart. So we need to be careful with all of okay. those things. All right. So um, I'm getting back. So I, if you've got arthritis, and I'm thinking of my mother right now. Yep. She's got a knee that bothers her on and off. It's arthritic problem. Uh, she's not a good candidate for surgery. So to manage the pain, she could put this on that knee. Yep. Um, yeah. Say there's no skin irritation. Yep. She can put the the dosage that's yep, on there. Yep, so it should be a four inch. Okay. So yeah, and then, you know, it's really neat for your mom. I mean, you know, one of the easiest ways, you know, a lot of times it's like, uh, are you really looking at your clock? Has it been six hours? I mean, I'll tell people just go breakfast, lunch, dinner, bed. Okay. I mean, those are intervals that are somewhat, nat just through our lives, we've kind of naturally spaced those apart. But so let's say you put it on there and it, do you notice the effect? Is it typically within an hour or is it kind of take a yeah, day Yeah, I mean, it's going to take a day or two of some consistent use. I mean, you might get some pain relief right out of the gates, but sure. it, it needs to be kind of an additive effect to, re, you know, because there's a lot of things going on with inflammation that's causing pain. Sure. And so we have to calm down all those chemotaxic and, and healing factors to give the relief to the patient. So it does require repeated dosing to get adequate drug response. So... A typical scenario, my mom's got knee pain. She uses this for a couple days. Yep. The knee pain's getting better. Or maybe it's, it's back to normal again. Yep. Then you can stop it. Yeah. You know, usually we're not going to want people to use this longer than seven days without at least discussing it with their doctor just because there could be something more potentially wrong with that sure. knee. You know, let's right. say she tore some cartilage or, you know, any of the litany of things that you're going to see mm. in there. Um, so we want to make sure that we're not overlooking something. So, but yeah, seven days is kind of the max and unless your doctor says, oh yeah, you can use it as long as you need to right. kind of thing. But right. make sure your doctor's involved. I mean, that's that's the quarterback of the team. I mean, you're, you're very, very important with your own health care, but your doctor should be involved or at least ask a pharmacist or, you know, one of your other health care professionals. To so make that, sure there's no red flags. Exactly. Uh, if you're on other medications. Yeah. Or you're Blood thinners would be the big no-no. Okay. So, All right. If, um, any other side effects or things to be... No, it's actually some pretty slick, innocuous stuff. I mean, not much bad with that simply because, you know, it, it just it acts locally. So you don't get as much into the system. Yeah. So it doesn't create all sure. the systemic and sit side effects. So it's it's pretty impressive stuff. Uh, there's a lot of orthopedic surgeons and, and doctors out there that routinely prescribe it still, even mm -hmm. though it is over the counter, because sometimes your copayment might be a little bit cheaper. Sure. But I mean, you can get a tube of that for about nine bucks over the counter. Sure. So it's, it's, it's affordable stuff. And that'll last you the seven days or even oh yeah easily i mean you know depending upon the size of the tube they actually make a larger tube too so it's sure. a little bit more economical but i mean i just grabbed a small one yeah. for an it example. depends on what size area you're covering exactly and, and how frequently i mean hopefully it's just going to be kind of a short-term thing anyways but yep. but it's available to you if you need it yeah well that's great I, I think it's a great alternative especially when you don't have to take pills if you've got yep. digestive exactly irritants yeah just remember guys it takes about five minutes for this to absorb so let's say you're treating a shoulder um want to rub it in give it about five minutes to dry other you know, put it on your shirt your shirt will kind of stick to it and oh I get see. a little slimy so <laughs> just that'd be just one of the yeah. other negative things that's not really a, an overt side effect but it's definitely a cause and effect kind of scenario yeah yeah you want to keep your clothing <laughs> You know, looking nice. Yes, exactly. All right. That answered a lot of information for me. I, I'm thinking this is going to be a, a go-to. I'm going to at least try it with my mother's knee. Yeah, I'd give it a whirl. See how, see how she responds. I bet she'd appreciate it. All right. Very good. Take care and uh, enjoy your uh, pain-free way of life. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>